Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Oscar Film Forecast, where today we are going to be predicting Best Actress, Best Leading Actress for um, the 2021 Oscars, which are taking place in April. Um, so obviously, these are very early predictions. These could change in an instant. A lot of these films don't have dates, but we are giving our very early predictions for Best Leading Actress. So do you have any honorable mention, Ellie? Today, I do. I am joined with Ben Campbell to predict um, the Best Leading Actress nominations. Do you, do you have any honorable mentions, Ben, or not? I do, yes. So do? Okay, go ahead and go through. My honorable mention is very much, very likely, I'm, I'm pushing this actress into honorable mentions because I have a riskier back who I would really like to see get a nomination, and I think yeah. I could. But... So I would love for this actress to be nominated and win because I love her. So Ms. Michelle Pfeiffer for The French Exit is um, an honorable mention. She's also an honorable mention because I'm not sure if The French Exit will come out in time. Yeah. But the film is about this widow who moves to Paris with a cat. Um, and she finds out that her cat is uh, or her reincarnated husband. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that just sounds like like an act. It's like a comedy, but it sounds like it could be like a dramedy type thing. Mm -hmm. And I think Michelle Pfeiffer has a really good history with cats. So yes. she could really pull this off. Yes. Funnily enough, that is also my honorable mention. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, good. Um, the reason I didn't put it in the top five is I do think it's going to be very focused around her. Um, I don't It's. I don't know how serious or not serious they're going to take the whole cat situation. If they take it in a more comedic route, I don't know if the Academy would technically honor that just because the Academy doesn't really honor comedies at all in general. Um, but if they take it as a route of like her coping with his death and like as he's the reincar reincarnated cat, I don't think the cat's going to talk, is it? I hope not. That'd be really stupid. I'd be like... Kevin Spacey cat movie. Yeah, I think if the cat talks, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna happen. But I do think um, she, she um, does deserve. Has she? She hasn't won an Oscar, has she? No, she hasn't, and she's so should. She should have. I mean, it's never gonna happen. But like, I wish she won for Catwoman. Yeah, that would that would have been cool supporting her. And fingers crossed, she uh, she comes back in the future. This is this has been recorded before DC fandom, so we do not know. Yeah, this is being recorded before that. Um. That would be cool if she came back. Uh, for a oh, it would be so cool. It'd be the oh, like that's the only reason to bring back Mr. Michael Keaton, you know? Yeah, she. I liked her more in that film than I liked when she was the standout. Yeah, she's the only good part of those movies. Yes. But yeah, Michelle um, Pfeiffer is both of our honorable mentions because yes. it's Michelle Pfeiffer, and the movie has France in the title, so it's probably going to get nominated. Yeah, French, lots of French love, French dispatch. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if she is French in the film. I don't know. No, I think she's American and she moves to Paris. I think. Oh, cool. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. She could be. She could be French. If she's French and she can pull off that accent, she'll definitely be nominated. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so who's your number five? My number five is uh, someone who is always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Miss Amy Adams. Oh. Uh, funnily enough, I have Amy Adams down for two movies because I'm not sure if oh, she's yeah. uh, eligible for best leading actress for Hillbilly. Uh, eulogy, but uh, or elegy, however you say it, but she could be nominated for that, or she could be nominated for her Joe Wright film, The Woman in the Window. That film yeah. looks phenomenal, um, but it doesn't have a date. It's to be determined. It's been to be determined since March, so I'm not sure if that's a priority. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if Disney's going to care about that film. I think they probably don't care about it. But oddly enough, Amy Adams is also my number five. Uh. <laughs> so I have her for Hillbilly elegy um yeah i i don't think woman in the window who knows about that but um uh i'm also unsure if she's definitely going to be pushed in the leading category um because i was reading about the book that they're um adapting that book that i can never say that word but they're adapting um and she, neither her nor glenn close are the main character it follows a boy um and his past and stuff like that and she's the mother um 
but they very much could campaign her in leading. A lot of the awards prediction sites right now are putting her in the lead category, so who knows? Um, in the book, it's Glenn Close, who's typically the bigger character, but I think they changed it for this movie. Yeah, I, that would make sense. Amy Adams seems more like the leading type than Glenn Close would be. Um, but it seems also like a emotional role. She's a woman, a mother who um, has a lot of like addiction and alcoholism issues and multiple different boyfriends and all that. So a little bit of a different role for Amy Adams. So I think the Academy could appreciate that very much. Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Because she yeah. deserves an Oscar at this point, guys. Like, yeah. Come on. She's another, just like, Saoirse Ronan and Glenn Close all competing this year. I think Saoirse not- Ronan is not at that level yet, but she could no. get there. Amy Adams has been in... She should have won for American Hustle, The Fighter, and Vice. She should have three Oscars at the moment. Yeah. I don't know about... I don't know if she should have won for Vice, but... Um, those okay, are, fair enough, I could give you that, but I thought she was phenomenal in that movie. Good, um, yeah. mm. I also think it was a travesty that she didn't get nominated for Arrival. That was very rude. Or Nocturnal Animals. Both were really oh, good. Yeah. She definitely... She deserves more love from the Academy. I don't think she'll be getting a win this year, but maybe she'll add another nomination to her long list. Then I'm curious to see who you think is going to win. Okay, well... Is it that was both our five, so now it's your four? Yes. Yeah, so my number four is uh, Olivia Coleman for The Father. Ah. Mm. You know, it's just going to be like an acting screaming match or like subtle looks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just The Father. I think it's almost definitely going to get nominated. People love Olivia Coleman. Easy. Yeah, I think, I think she has a good shot of getting nominated. That's another one where I don't know. Where they're going to put her right now, I would guess they're going to campaign her in Best Supporting Actress. But oh, maybe. Um, I have no clue, because they could go either way. It depends which category seems more packed. Um, if Glenn Close and Amy Adams are both going to be campaigning in Supporting, I would think they may try Coleman in Lead. But she is not on my list. But I think if we did Supporting Actress, I'd probably put her in there. I think she is going to get nominated, because it seems like a she gives a great performance. Yeah. If that's okay, so there's also one thing I want to say. I don't have um, The Prom on my list, that okay. there's a movie called The Prom, and like it has Meryl Streep and Julia Moore in it, and apparently people think it's going to be nominee. I don't, it only start. it was only a week into filming. Same with Nightmare Alley. There were only a few weeks into filming. Yeah. So I don't think that those movies are going to come out. If so, Kate Blanchett and yeah. uh, Julia yeah. Moore would have been on my list. I would have had Kate Blanchett, definitely. I don't know about prom, um, but I don't think either of them are going to make the call. Mm. Maybe Nightmare Alley, but that would be kind of close. Um, so now is it my four, right? Yes. Okay, so my four is Jennifer Hudson in Respect. Um, the Academy, they love these biopics, obviously, as they've, as they've shown before with Judy and Bohemian Rhapsody and all of these people. Um, I think that from the trailer, it looks like Jay Hud gives a great performance. Um, and it, she was also handpicked by Aretha, Aretha Franklin um, mm. to play her. So I think that helps her very much so in the role. And I think she's also going to give a very powerful, as always, vocal performance, which can always help. Um, so I think she'll most likely get in there as um like these biopics sometimes the movie doesn't have to be great but if she gives a good enough performance i think she would still get in there hmm. yeah i'm jennifer is hmm? i'm guessing she's somewhere on your list Kevin. oh yeah she is somewhere on my list all right okay. um my number three i think my number three and my number two are massive risks but i think they're also I think there are risks with um, a, like a degree of truth uh, and reality to them. So my number three is Ms. Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Have you heard of this movie? I have, and it is also, it's also my number three. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I think it's really likely because she got her Oscar for Fences, which was based off of an August Wilson play. August Wilson's one of the best playwrights, you know, to, to ever live. Um, 
And this is also based off of an August Wilson play, which I looked up and I think it has a pretty gripping plot to it. I think mm -hmm. it's perfect for Viola Davis, especially after what she said about not being treated fairly it, compared to Sigourney Weaver and Julianne Moore, um, about how she is identical to them in her um, experience, right. but she is not identical to them in her career. So yeah. I think it would be great for her to get another Oscar nomination, or maybe if the Academy is feeling uh, pretty generous, she could get a second Oscar. I don't think I don't think people would complain about Renee Zellweger. I don't think anyone would complain giving Viola Davis a second Oscar. Especially if she gives a great performance, which she always does. That's not even up for question. She's going to give a great She's performance. She's going to give a great performance. Yeah. Um, it all, I, I don't know who's distributing the film. Um, if it's a smaller studio, like an 8. I don't think it's 8.4, but depends how well, much money. Sure even. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, she's also my number three. Um, she's one supporting actress, but she hasn't won Best Actress, so maybe that can help her out. I'm trying to get a win. Um, and it also like a lot of these films seems timely um it's sort of about like she's a black musician and she's fighting with her white producer and bandmates for more i don't know i don't know the plot exactly they like respect. so that could cancel they could cancel each other out yes they could they do i think that's true i don't just like with Tenet and dune i'm not they do seem similar this ma rainey's black bottom and respect um so who I think both could get in there right now. They're in both of our top fives, but it's probably not likely Academy to nominate two black actresses in one. Uh, Academy. Well, I, I'm thinking they're going to nominate three. Oh, right. oh, well, we'll see. I, I hope so. Um, so what? Yeah. What is your number two? Okay. <laughs> this one's absolutely insane. Um, it's probably never going to happen, but I think it could. <laughs> oh, I, this is this is really. This is really like a, a big risk, a big swing. So my number two is Janelle Monet for Antebellum. Oh, okay. No, I can yep. see that. I was I was yeah. half expecting a Margot Robbie and Birds of Prey there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think though that Margot Robbie could get a Golden Globe nomination for Birds of Prey for two reasons. One, they split the category, so it's easier. Yeah. Uh, but also two, the industry likes to support indie talent who do blockbuster work. You know, like Johnny Depp got a lot of Golden Globe nominations for a while. Um, you know, that, that just happens. They like to support indie talent doing that. So I think that Margot Robbie could very well, and also the industry loves Birds of Prey. So Margot Robbie could get a Golden Globe nomination, but no, I'm thinking Janelle Monáe for Antebellum, and here's why. Yeah. Like, the movie is, I'm not sure what the kind of plot is, but it's literally about a black woman who is in New Orleans. So like that's like then bringing like bringing her back in time to work in cotton fields. Like I can't, I don't even think I grasp the story properly because it's not put across very well in the trailers, but she's no, brought back in time, like to work on, to work as a slave. Oh. And then she has, it sounds like a get out type of situation, you know? Yeah. I, I remember. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailer a long time ago. Um, it seemed like a, a horror esque film, but I didn't. I forgot that that was um, the main story of it. So that seems like Get Out in a way that it's um semi horror thriller, but it also has deeper meaning to it. So if she gives it, she usually gives a great performance, and the Academy has and it, shown her. It enough. completely depends on if the Academy wants to either you know nominate someone like Janelle Monet because I did nominate her for Hidden Figures and she should have won for Hidden Figures because she's still mm -hmm. phenomenal in that film. Um, if they want to nominate someone like Janelle Monet, if they want to nominate a film like Antebellum and how far they want to go in pushing black talent in their nominees. There's a lot of moving factors here. But if they want to do that, because they did have her perform last year uh, and that was like the best part of the night, her performing. So... If they want to do all of those things, if they want to highlight a few, you know, different films like uh, that they typically don't nominate, I would be thrilled to see Janelle Monet for Antebellum because I think that there is a likely case to be made for uh, that pick. Yeah, and I forget whether or not this is this year or the following year. Didn't the Academy say something about them doing like diversity requirements? For 
like, okay. like nominate. don't have diversity requirements. Just nominate. Yeah. Ugh. They added They're also. So <laughs> they added a lot more diverse people very recently, so I think that increases Janelle Monae's chances. Um, I think it really depends on how the film plays out. Like, if it turns out to be a bad film, I don't think she's gonna get in. There. I think. Um, I think the directors are a real hurdle for the film. Yeah, they're not big names, and they don't look like they're doing a particularly good job. I feel like it's. I think they are doing a solid job. But I could easily watch this movie at home. Yeah. If it comes out near a cinema near me, I will see it because I will support Janelle Monet. Mm. Um, it just doesn't look particularly cinematic, and I think it could. I think it could be a really big, a big, big movie, but it's yeah. not, and that's kind of frustrating for me that, because yeah. I want I want it to be, but I'm not sure if it is. It's so that's perfect. why it's a big risk. I think it's a big risk, but I think it's. Mm, maybe I don't know. Possibility, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Especially I mean, even Lopina Nyango didn't get in for us, but um I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, same. And, um so my number two is Francis Mc Francis McDormand in Nomad Land. Um it, mm. oh I know who your number one is, but I'm not gonna I'll yeah. I'll say before you probably have a pretty good idea. Um I um first off, I mean it's Frances McDormand. I mean she's won two Oscars. She's been nominated more than that. I think the Academy just clearly loves her. Um, and she's a woman, like trying to find. She lost everything, and now she's trying to find herself. She becomes a nomad. The whole movie is pretty much centered around her, so she has a lot of time and moments to give these great. Um, clips of great performances um, that they can play uh, for people who don't watch the full film uh, for, vote, for those voters. Um, so I think she has a pretty good shot of getting in there, um, especially since Chloe Zhao is a great director. I, would, I don't think she would steer her down any bad paths, and I don't think Francis would ever go down a bad acting path. She seems like a great performer, but um, she did just win more recently. But um, as we've said before, um, just because you've won doesn't mean you won't get nominated many times again. Yeah. No, you're definitely right. You're definitely right to have her. So who is your, did you do your number two or no? I did, yeah. Janelle oh, was my number, number two. Again. My number one is Jennifer Hudson for R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Respect. That's, that's, yeah, I had a feeling it would be, um, I think she's definitely going to get in there, do you think? Since you have her at number one, do you think she would be the right now likely winner since she's already won? I mean, like, this could be like a Bohemian Rhapsody Rocket Man situation, and it could be like Judy Respect. Yeah. It would just be disastrous. That would just be so bad for this mm -hmm. movie. If it that, would be. But if this movie can actually be good and get other nominations, which I think it can, then it has nothing to worry about. Yeah. I really hope that the director, um, Eliza Tommy, is able to really uh, pull off a miracle here. And I think she can. I think um, I like I like the way she's um, positioned the film. I think M the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend is perfect. Yeah. So I think it's all in this movie to be good. And I think it has potential to be like Green Book good, where it's about you know, a struggling artist. Mm -hmm. uh, like it feels like it takes place at that time. It looks a lot like Green Book. So it could be a lot like Green Book. It does look very high quality. Um, yeah. I, I don't understand why they released the trailer already. Um, mm. it's, very, it's very long until it's released, but I, I'm not complaining. It looks very good. I want to make a guess about what your number one is. Is okay. it Kate Winslet in Ammonette? It is Kate Winslet in, um, <laughs> I don't know how yeah. you say it, Ammonite. Yes. Ammonite um, or whatever, yeah. Ammonette sounds more right. It seems French. Um, maybe. I don't know if it's actually French. It's English, I think, actually. Mm. Um, but, I mean, Kate Winslet, she is an Oscar darling. Um, she hasn't gotten a ton of love recently. I think her last nomination was the Steve Jobs movie in Supporting Actress. I think she got nominated for that. But yeah. Maybe. I mean, she did a Woody Allen movie. That's how desperate she got. Oh, yes. No. I think she would probably rather people forget that. Um, 
but I, it seems like it could be an emotional performance. She is the lead. Um, but I don't know. It just, I don't really have a lot of reasoning behind it. It just seems like... Um, yeah, it seems natural. seems like a, a perfect fit with the Academy. Now, I don't know, since I do have her at number one, I don't know if she's going to win. I don't mm-hmm. know if Frances McDormand... Frances McDormand's not going to win. I don't know if... The, I don't really know who's going to win here. because the, I think these sure lists are more like... Yeah. Not about, our number one probably won't win. Like, my number one for best picture was Respect. I don't think Respect is going to win best picture. Yeah. I just have everything that I think is most likely to win at number one. The most oh, likely yeah. to be nominated at number one. No, me too. I just, just looking at all of my, everything I have down, the only one who hasn't won, Amy Adams. But I don't even know if she's going to be in lead. I really hope she does. I feel so bad for her. Yeah, I, if she does win, I would be happy. I just don't know if that could happen. Um, mm. And then Michelle Pfeiffer. Like that, that, would be, that would be an awesome thing for her to win. But um, then I just don't I don't even know if she'll get nominated. It depends on the film. But this is it's a tricky category so far. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through our lists one last time. So my honorable mention was Michelle Pfeiffer and French Exit. Let's hope she can get in there. Um, five is Amy Adams in Hillbilly Elegy. Four, Jennifer Hudson in Respect. Uh, three was Viola Davis in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Two, Frances McDormand in Nomadland. And one, Kate Winslet in Amethyst. Wonderful list, I gotta say. Uh, ours are kind of the same, they're really similar. They so, my honorable mention is Michelle Pfeiffer for the French Exit. My number five was Olivia Coleman for The Father. My number four was Amy Adams for The Woman in the Window slash Hillbilly. Oh, no. Amy Adams was my number five. Okay. Olivia Coleman was my number four. Uh, my number three was Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. My number two was Janelle Monet for Antebellum. Uh, and my number one is Jennifer Hudson for Respect. There we go. Um, tricky category. Um, like the other ones, I I don't really know who could win here. It's interesting. No, uh, fingers crossed for poor uh, Michelle Pfeiffer or Amy Adams. Yes, they would both deserve it very much, though. So. Um, but the the Oscars haven't helped them out yet. But hopefully this mm-hmm. year. So those are our predictions for the 2021 Oscars Best Actress nominations. Um, obviously subject to change come time, but right now that's our take on this tricky category.